All right, so today I'm going to be going over a board that had lemonade spilled on it. Yes, this is the new microphone, and yes, I did decide to put that silly pop filter on it. I uploaded a video recently just for the hell of it with a standard microphone set up, like a standard what other YouTubers would use, and it sucked. I mean, for, for what it is I do at the very least, it was absolutely awful, so that's fine. I totally don't mind uh, my, you know, my... Uh, my gimmick being that I'm the instructional video guy with the jackass looking microphone. It sounds good, it works, so I, I don't care. I like not having plosives. The last video I did had a few that were annoying, and it's just like, really, I mean, are, are you watching this channel for my fucking looks? I mean, I, you know, I, I figured the idea of me uploading myself to the internet so that people could see how beautiful I, 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 I how sexy I am, kind of, you know, like that, that, that kind of ended when I didn't grow up past five foot six in high school. Anyway. So what's going on with this board? This is, uh, this is a board that had lemonade spilled on it. The customer asked that I would do a video on fixing it, which I did not do because their board wound up being a fucking nightmare and I wanted to go home the day that I was doing the video. So I just said, screw this. And, but what I do want to do is I want to go through what it is I did to fix it, what my thought process was so that, you know, that they have a bit of an idea. So this came in with the uh, problem that it works slow off of the battery. It works really, really slow. And that's usually a sensor issue. So whether it's you know, some current sensing or some voltage sensing, or there's some, usually some sensor on the board that's not reporting the proper information to the SMC, and that causes the SMC to say, you know, let's just run really, really slow. But, you know, let's not turn off the computer. Let's just make it stay on but be un un unusable. Great. Again, yeah, like, you know, I don't understand why Apple does this. There are other companies that make computers with a CPU temperature sensor, a GPU temperature sensor, like a general temperature sensor, and that's it, not like 90 different voltage sense and you know current senses and all this that. So here, let me go over the first thing that I noticed. So the first thing that I noticed here is that when I run the Apple service test, the entire thing passed. It did not fail a single test with the Apple service diagnostic, which is great. Again, thank you for making a useless piece of software that uh, pretty much says everything is working when it isn't. So the Apple service test didn't tell me what sensor was bad, which meant that I had to start using my brain. And when I started using my brain, I looked around the board and I found that one area of it did not look nice. Speaking of not looking nice, let me just reset this camera so that it looks decent. So this section of the board, now you can see how I, there are these probe points, right? There are these holes. So that's one. Uh, this is one. This is one. Well, this one over here looked kind of rusted. So let's just zoom in and see what I did. So what I did is I filled the hole up with flux. And then I, ha I had my iron there. And what I did is I had the iron sitting on, on top of this hole. And let me just get that into view. And then I ran solder into it as fast as I could. But I made sure that what I was doing the whole time is I made sure that the little uh, nasty section of the hole, I made sure that the iron was touching there. And I ran the solder in. This is very similar to what they did with wave soldering. So I don't know if you've ever gotten to see a wave soldering plant before. It's, it's really cool. I don't know if the one that I actually got to see was you know, the way that they're supposed to do shit or not, but they have this vat of solder that's overflowing, and then they have all these PC boards with through hole components in the, it, it, with flux, and the whole idea is they just run the, it over, and the, and the whole idea is the actual, like, the little, whatever, the gust of air or whatever it is that, that moves by actually causes the solder to get sucked onto the PC board, onto all these little solder pads, and that's, that's how the stuff gets soldered. It's, you know, I don't know if what I saw was the right way to do it, but it, was, but it really gave me this idea in my head that that I could do the same general idea. The whole idea is that it doesn't, here's what I learned. It doesn't matter how much solder you're using, that if you wind up doing something like this, like again, when you're swifting it by really fast by that, by that of overflowing solder, the same thing is I could be adding as much solder as I want. When I do like this, all the excess solder is going to get sucked up onto the iron and only the solder that's necessary is going to stay there so long as I flick it away. So again, what, what you see over here is that same idea is that there's no excess solder or on, the, on this joint here. There's nothing excess. It's just filling up that hole that was a little bit corroded. Now, if we go on the schematics, let me just open up a schematic for this model motherboard so that you, and, and the board view so that you could kind of see what's going on. So this is the A20-3115 motherboard. Okay, we can go over to the screen capture. Hey, what are you complaining about? Right. Okay, so what? Uh, so let's just follow along and see what was burned. So on the microscope camera, we can see that it's this pin because this is obvious. You see this? A lot of people who come here for the tutoring don't see this, but the board is actually kind of telling you where everything is. So you have this little trace over here, and that's going over to this. So let's just look at the, at the board view and see 
where that is. So on the board view, so oh my god, stop complaining. This software sucks. All right, it always gives you an error. Now if I go over here and I click there, that's pin 5 of U5410. So U5410 is power part of power sense. So let's see exactly what that does. Other high side current sense. Other high side current sense. So the whole idea is that power will go through this little resistor. There'll be a voltage drop across the resistor. You're welcome to view any one of my many, many videos on current sensing if you want to understand how current sensing is. And then it shoots out a little thing of the SMC. Now, here's what I don't get. After fixing that, there was a... Uh, well, after fixing that and a bunch of other shit. Uh, after fixing that, the, the slow problem went away. So that fixed it, which means that the I0, IO... 0R sensor. This one over the IO0R sensor, other high side current sensor, was not doing what it was supposed to. But if that wasn't working the way it was supposed to, then why is it that ASD did not give me a sensor error? If it's not doing what it's supposed to, ASD is supposed to give me a sensor error and say this sensor is reading above the limit or below the limit or cannot read the sensor so I know what's going on, and it did not do that. Which sucks. It's bullshit. Boom. So I, d I finished that and it works. I'm like, great! Easy board repair! No. So right after that happened, I decided to run ASD again since I noticed that it was working and it was not running slow. I turned the computer off and I go to run ASD and it doesn't want to turn on. Great. Now we have a new problem. So now I'm like, oh, fuck. So am I going to have to have Steve tell this guy that, yeah, so I know you brought us a machine that it was only turning on slightly slow, but now it's dead? Because um, these, these are the things that suck. Because technically with board repair, that can totally happen. And that really does happen with, with like, a, especially liquid damage. Liquid damage is kind of like, you know, it's just kind of like a, a, a cancer. It just gets worse and worse and worse, and you can be fine one day, totally screwed the next day. Um, no real way to tell where you are at the process. So let's go over this. So the rail that I wound up missing when I go to the schematic over here is PP5VS5. Now let's just see, let's just see where this comes from and what makes this. PP5ES5 is made by the LDO inside of U7200. You can Google LDO to figure out what that is. It's a power supply that is meant for taking a power that's like a voltage slightly higher than it and just stepping it down a tiny bit versus a buck converter, which switches down out of a really high power to a really low voltage, I mean a really high voltage to a really low voltage. So what's going to enable this? What enables PP5ES5 LDO, if I Google TPS50125, which is this chip, what enables it is this thing over here. It's at the, actually, is it this one or is it? Hmm. Yeah, this one over here. I'm losing it. I, it's this one, pin 13. Now, 5V3, V3 reg N comes from P5V3, V3 reg N. So we follow that back to here. And that comes through when this is present, SMC, PM, G2, EN. So what I do is I check and I see that SMC, PM, G2, EN comes from the SMC. So the SMC, PM, G2, EN signal, I saw that that signal was working just fine. That signal was up. And then I go down the line here. I check P, 3B3, S5, EN, LR, blah. I mean, not that one. I check this one. P, 5V, 3V3, reg N. And that signal was not, pr well, that was present. This was present. But it goes to this resistor before it gets to the chip. And what I notice is that on the other side of it, it was gone. So here's the thing. That resistor worked. So I measure the resistor and it works. Measure the resistor and it works. Well, great. So what's going on here? So if I have the signal over here, I don't have it over here, and this resistor is working, what's going on? I can tell you. What's going on is that this chip is fucked, and it's taking everything and just shorting it to ground. So it's not creating PP5ES5 because it's fucked, and it's also taking my working enable, and it's, and, it, and it's just fucking it and shorting it to ground. So I replace this chip, and now not only do I not have an enable on this side, I also don't have an enable on this side. So I'm not kidding you. I replace U7200. U7200 is replaced, and now my signal that was there just a fucking minute ago is gone. So let's go back over here. I have SMC PM G2 EN coming in. But I don't have P5VS3, P5V3V3 reg N. That's a, this, these are tongue twisters, man. P5V3V3 reg N was not coming out. So this was coming in, but now this was not coming out. This was working just a fucking second ago. So I decide, well, I have power coming into the chip. I don't have power. I don't have the signal coming out of the chip. And I am getting PP3V42 on pin one. So what the fuck? 
So this logic gate is getting power. It's getting power to power on. It's getting the signal that tells it to open and send these out, but it doesn't send them out. So what do I do? I replace U7941. And what do you think happens when I replace U7941? Well, now I don't have this signal anymore. Well, check this out. This is where it gets funny. I don't have this one anymore either. This starts blinking. SMZ, PM, G2EN is going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And now I'm, I just want to fucking cry. So this signal was just here a second ago when I replaced this because this chip is getting this signal but not shooting out that one. I replaced this chip. This signal fucking goes away. And now, it's, again, it's, I just, I just want to cry. So what I do is I go to where that signal comes from and... It's this chip, U4900, U4900, Mr. I have over 80 or 70 little tiny, miny, mini balls and you can only steal me from donor boards that may not work because this chip was bad on them. So what do I do? But replace that chip and I replace the SMC and now it turns on, it works, it runs fast. And let's just go over the microscope so you can see all this chip. So this over here is a little via. That was the original fucking problem. Then this chip over here was shorting my uh, one of its enables to ground, so we replace it. Now it's not shorting anything to ground anymore, but it's fucking... It's, uh, it's, wait, that's not the chip. Am I losing it? Yeah, I was about to say that soldering looks too good to be something that I've done. Yeah, this looks a lot like something I've done. So... This over here is the chip that I replaced because it was shorting the signal on this side of the resistor. So this is where the enable signal comes in. And this is where it comes out and goes to the chip. Actually, no, this is where it comes in and that's where it goes out to the chip. Ah, you get the idea. This chip was bad and it was it had signal over here, but I didn't have signal over here. Shorting it through the ground. Very, very sad. So what do I do now? What I do is I replace this. Great. But now I'm missing the signal upstream. So now we go over to this over here, and you get let's get that zoomed in on the camera. Yep, that definitely looks like my soldering. I'm looking at the right chip because it is, yeah. If it's crooked, it's something that I did. So this is it. Might as well shoo, get out of there. I'm gonna pick that up later. I see where it went. So th we have this chip, up, up, in a way. This is the one that takes the signal from the SMC, and then if it's receiving PP3V42, is going to pass that on to the U7200. I replace this, and nothing's working. So then we move on, and we go up here, and this is the SMC. This is the miserable chip that is bullshit to replace. Let's just get this in focus. And this is the SMC, which, as you can see, is replaced. I actually did run this through the ultrasonic cleaner after everything is done. That's why you don't see flux on it. But even after the ultrasonic cleaner at about 65C for a few minutes with the liquid, there's still a little bit of flux residue. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go nuts about removing all that stuff. Uh, there were three bad resistors by the SMC. And as you can see, I purposely left them off. These resistors here are for programming the board. So you use these resistors over here to program the motherboard. We're using this little jumper on it. So if you're Apple, you can and and you work at the you know the Apple factory, and the board has this jumper on it, which is not installed on this board. What you can do is you can use some type of JTAG connector, and you can connect to it, and you can reprogram the SMC yourself. And I want to explain why it is that I don't put this back on the board because this is an important one. Here's the thing. When the SMC is bad, I don't get to reprogram an SMC by just pl putting something on the board because Apple doesn't release those tools to any of us. Again, you know, they say, fuck you. So what I have to do is I have to scavenge through a bunch of boards that have holes in them, boards that look like this and like this to try to find an SMC that's good. Then I have to take that SMC and remove it, and then I have to reattach 96 little 0.25 or 0.3 millimeter fucking balls to it to, to, to put that on there. Whereas Apple, when they want to refurbish the board, they have to go... Dude, dude, and they're done. No, get the fuck out of here. If this board, here's the thing. For the customer, if they ever need this board repaired, Apple will not fix the board. They will charge a flat rate of 750 bucks, take the old one back, and give them, an, and give them another one. They're, this is not going to affect the customer one bit because nothing in Apple's business model, nothing in Apple's business model uh, deals with fixing boards for the end consumer. So that's only going to help Apple if they get this board back and they want to fix it to refurbish for their own means. And 
So what what has Apple done to make any of this easier for me? So like, are they emailing me schematics when the newest Retina comes out? Are they giving me are they like uh, t- giving me the tools I need to flash the, the the BIOS so I have a clean ME region? Are they giving me the tool I need to flash the SMC? Are they telling me where to buy new graphics chips? Are they telling me where to find ISL six two five nines? No, they're not. Apple does everything in their power to make my life miserable. So, if this board ever makes its way back to an Apple refurbishing center, I am very, very happy to say that I've been a part of making it just a little bit harder for them to squeeze some money out of this. If you're the person that gets this back and goes to reprogram the SMC at Apple, all I have to say is, fuck you, you won't be able to do it because I ripped off your SMC, TDI, and TDO resistors. So, screw you. Again, no change in functionality to the end user unless you have again and i'm not going to rip them off to be mean but if they're if they're corroded you bet your ass i'm not spending an, one fucking nanosecond of my time to solder good ones back on so that y- so that apple can reprogram the smc for their own profit when they when, when they leave me to use little fucking stencils and and, and balls and take all the little balls and all the little individual balls and all the individual little holes like and yeah, like, no, fuck you, Apple. You don't, you know, no. Makes no difference to the end user. And yeah, so this board works great now. It runs fast off the battery. It runs fast off the charger. It always turns on. It's past the Apple service diagnostic, which it's not that impressive because it passed the fucking Apple service diagnostic before any of this shit to begin with. But And it, and it passes our own uh, stress test that we run here to make sure stuff works. So I'm happy that this works. And for the love of God, please do not spill lemonade on this ever again.